of God that is in fact all of us however that they are those who have been assigned to ensure that we are growing spiritually uh, whether that be pastors, apostles prophets, evangelists uh, teachers some people say teaching pastors okay um, so if you fall in that category and you're responsible for the spiritual growth of other believers. Kindly just wave your hand. We want to honor you. And if you can, just rise up on your feet so we can honor you and celebrate you. I know Pastor G already mentioned a few names, but kindly just stand up and we'll honor you. Amen. Could we, could we celebrate them? Thank you so, so much. Good to see you, sir. Please, come and take my seat. Come. Karibu sana. Amen. Uh, allow me also to extend gratitude to... Uh, she calls me Papa Yona. I call her Mama Eve so that it balances out. <laughs> allow me to extend gratitude to Mama Eve and everyone else who was involved in organizing this meeting. Could we just celebrate that team? Uh, 
I see the rest of the team is at the back. They are helping with ushering and assisting people to come in. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Amen. I would like to get into the word of God, if that's okay. Hallelujah. I'm really trying to stand here properly because things are really hot, but <laughs> I will be okay. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Um, I have requested Minister Jack to help me translate in Kiswahili, just in case there's somebody who is, who is here and you're not very uh, comfortable with English. I don't want you to... How did I miss to recognize Apostle David all the way from Uganda? I don't even know which time you came. Now is when I'm seeing you. <laughs> Karibu sana. All right. So Minister Jack will assist me. Is that okay? All right. So today, if you're writing notes, I actually want to build on what Pastor Gloria has shared. And I want to talk about how the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the foundation of the new birth. Hey, Father Lord. Sing his foundation. Waliguza yes. Murima. I knew you were going to say something like that. And they have come here very serious. I was speaking to Pastor Peter Chalo today and he said, even the Lord said, do not touch the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how that is the foundation of the new birth. So I want us to go to Psalms chapter number two, um, verses number seven. Psalms chapter two. Zaburi mbili verses number 7 mstari wa 7 There are verses which Bible scholars refer to as messianic verses Kuna mistari katika agano la kale wasomi wa Biblia wanaita kama ni maandiko yaliyohusu Kristo kabla hajazaliwa Because these verses directly speak about the Messiah Zinaongea moja kwa moja kuhusu Masihi the Messiah is um, a person that was spoken about by the Jewish prophets. Masihi ni mtu ambaye likuwa maongelewa na manabiwa kiyahudi. A person who would come. Mtu ambaye angekuja. And not only be the savior of Israel. Na siyo tu angekuwa mokozi wa Israeli. But also the savior of the whole world. Bali pia mokozi wa ulimwengu mzima. And when you read the writings of the Jewish prophets from Genesis through to Malachi na ukisoma maandiko ya manabii wa Kiyahudi kuanzia kitabu cha mwanzo hadi kitabu cha Malaki you will discover verses that directly speak of this person utakumbana na mistari ambayo inaongea moja kwa moja kuhusu huyu masihi of course we know that that messiah is in fact Jesus sasa Christ. hivi sisi tunajua huyo masihi ni Kristo Yesu so Psalms 2 verse 7 is one of those verses Zaburi mbili mstari wa saba ni moja wapo wa hizo mistari. And this is what it says. Na inasema hivi. I will declare the decree. Nitaihubiri nita amri. The Lord has said to me. Buwana aliniambia. You are my son. Ndiwe mwanangu. This day. Mimi leo. Have I begotten you. Nimekuza. Let me repeat that again. I will declare the decree. Nitaihubiri amri. The Lord has said to me, Bwana aliniambia, you are my son, ndiwe mwanangu. This day, leo hii, I have begotten thee. Nimekuza. All right. Before we look at this a bit further, kabla tujengia ndani sana, allow me to say this. Niruhusu kusema hivi. When you study the scriptures, 
wakati unasoma maandiko you discover that before uh, Jesus took upon himself flesh and blood utagundua kwamba kabla Yesu hajachukua mwili wa binadamu he existed as god alikuepo tangu mwanzo kama mungu and you can find passages like John chapter 1 na utapata maandiko kama Yohana mstari wa sura ya kwanza Colossians 1 as well wa Kolosai pia sura ya kwanza that speaks about how everything God created he created through Christ ambayo inasema kila kitu ambacho Mungu aliumba aliumba kupitia Kristo Yesu there are passages like uh, Philippians chapter 2 kuna maandiko kama wa Filipi sura ya pili where it talks about how he he was in the form of god ambayo inasema kwamba alikuwa katika mfano wa then made a transition to become a man for our salvation akafanyika mfano wa mwanadamu that, that should be philippians 2 i believe wa, wa philippians 2 wa filipo let this mind be sura in you which was in christ jesus kuanzia mstari okay. wa 4 akwamba wata mawazo haya kuwe kwenu kama vile ilikuwa kwa kristo and several passages that allude to what we call the divinity of Jesus Christ. Na pia kuna maandiko mengi ambayo yanatuelezea kuhusu uungu wa Kristo Yesu. One time he said Abraham looked forward to see my day. Wakati mwingine akasema Abraham alitazamia kuona siku yangu and he rejoiced. Naye akafurahia. And the Jews said, <laughs> Wayahudi wakamwambia, you are not even 50 years old. Wewe hujafikisha hata miaka 50. And then it said to them, na akawaambia, before Abraham was I am ya kwamba kabla Abraham kuzaliwa He never said before Abraham was I was. Hakusema hakusema katika nyakati iliyopita. He used the phrase I am alisema nipo which is the same phrase God told Moses when Moses said if I go to Pharaoh who should I say sent me? Ambavyo ndivyo Mungu alimwambia Musa alipouliza nikienda kwa Pharaoh And God told Moses tell him I am has sent you. Mungu akasema enda uambie kwamba so Jesus mimi identified himself as that I am. Kwa hivyo Yesu anajitambulisha kama huyo aliye. And immediately they took stones to want to stone him. They said this is blasphemy. Na wakachukua mawe walikuwa nataka kumrushia kwa sababu alisema ana Because you being a man are claiming yourself to be God. Kwa sababu wewe ukiwa mwanadamu unadai kwamba wewe ni Mungu. You find those verses that speak about the divinity of Jesus Christ. Kwa hivyo kuna hayo maandiko yanaongea kuhusu uungu wa Kristo Yesu. Then there is a term Again I did not coin this term so don't think I'm very clever these are terms I've also found with Bible scholars Kuna neno nitalitumia na msikilizaji There's a term called the incarnation Inaitwa incarnation ama kufanyika mwanadamu kuchukua mwili wa kibinadamu Yes the way you said it Ivio. That is it Hivyo <laughs> God becoming a what a man Mungu akafanyika mwanadamu For the purpose of salvation kwa makusudi ya wokovu In fact in 1 Corinthians 15 it says since death came by a man katika wa Korinto 1:15 inasema kwa sababu Adam, mauti ilipitia kwa mwanadamu that the resurrection of the dead should also come through another man ilifanyika muhimu kwamba ufufuo kutoka kwa mauti pia ipitie kwa mwanadamu mwingine to save us it, it was necessary that god had to become a man ili atuokoe ilikuwa muhimu kwamba Mungu afanyike mwanadamu okay mm. Yes. There is the incarnation. Kwa hivyo kuna hiyo kujivika mwili wa And for the longest time whenever I read Psalms 2 verse 7, na kwa mara muda mrefu nilipokuwa nikisoma Zaburi 2:7, I always thought that this was referring to the incarnation. Nilikuwa nafikiria kwamba hii inamaanisha ile hali ya huyu Yesu kujitweka mwili wa binadamu. Let me read it again for us. Wacha niisome tena. It says the Lord has said to me Yesema nitaihubiri amri Bwana aliniambia So this is the Messiah speaking and saying the Lord has said to me the Messiah Huyu ni Masihi anaongea na anasema Bwana amenenenea mimi Masihi You are my son ya kwamba wewe ni mwanangu Then he says today leo hii I have begotten you nimekuzaa Now in my thinking I always imagined that was during the incarnate katika mawazo yangu nilikuwa nafikiria hiyo ndio ile wakati Kristo alijitweka mwili wa kibinadamu. Until I came across this passage of scripture which I want us to read. Hadi nilipokutana na sehemu hii ya maandiko nataka tuseme pamoja. In Acts chapter number 13 matendo ya mitume 13. This is a sermon that Paul was preaching in a synagogue. Haya ni mahubiri ambayo Paulo alihubiri katika sinagogi moja. 
And he is going to quote this verse we have read, Psalms 2 verse 7. So open with Na, me to Acts chapter 13. Um, I'm going to skip his sermon and I'm going to jump to this part. Eh? Alright, maybe let's read from 26. Wacha tuanzie mstari wa 26 Zaburi 13 I want you to capture is verse 33 and verse um 34 Ningependa uangalie kimaki okay, Maybe we we'll read up to 39 let's just read Paul Simon Hadi 39 so, I hope you're following along yes. I I always ask how many people came here with a notebook Na uliza ni wangapi walikuja na daftari ama kitabu cha kuandikia Physical notebook let me see uh, kitabu kitabu digital notebook uh, <laughs> na wale ambao wamekuja na daftari ya kidigital notebook of the mind <laughs> na wenye wamekuja na kitabu katika okay. akili i'm teasing you people okay acts 13 where Matendo are we mitume 13 26 thank you pastor g he says men and brethren children of the stock of abraham nasema ndugu zangu wana wa ukoo wa ibrahim and because he was he was preaching in a synagogue so these were predominantly Jews who were there he says Alikuwa children of the stock of Abraham anasema wana wa ukoo wa Ibrahim and whosoever among you fears God na hao miongoni mwenu wanao mcha Mungu to you is the word of this salvation sent kwetu sisi neno la wokovu huu limepelekwa for they that dwell at Jerusalem and their rulers because they knew him not kwa maana wakao Yerusalemu na wakuu wao kwa kuwa hawakumjua yeye no yet the voices of the prophets which are read every sabbath day wala maneno ya manabii yanayosomwa kila sabato that's first of all that's interesting hiyo ni you know Paul is, is speaking to this congregation in the synagogue is telling them the rulers ended up killing Jesus Paulo anawahubiria wayahudi na they really did not recognize him as the Messiah kwa sababu hawakumtambua kama Messiah and they also did not recognize the voices of the prophets which are read every sabbath day na pia hawakutambua sauti ya manabii ambayo husomwa kila sabato i can just imagine sabato. like in the sabbath whenever they would read the scroll they land on Isaiah 53 katika kila wakati kwa sabato wakisoma kitabu cha Isaiah the suffering kwa servant Inaongea kuhusu ule mfanyikazi wa Mungu anayeumia. Then you even say amen at the reading of that word. <laughs> Kisha baada yake watu wanasema amina. Every single how often Kila were there? Sabato. How often weekly. were there? Kila week. How weekly. often they used to meet in the synagogue? Kila week. And then they ended up fulfilling the very thing. Kisha wakatimiza hayo hayo maandiko. Because they did not really Kosa... understand the message of the jewish prophet kwa sababu hawakuelewa ujumbe okay. wa hao manabi wa kiyahudi all right let's continue he says and though they though they found no cause of death in him na ijapokuwa hawakuona sababu ya kumfisha yet they desired pilate that he should be killed wakamwomba pilato awauwe and when they had fulfilled awawe. all that was written of him walipokwisha kumaliza yote aliyoandikwa they took him down from the tree wakamteremsha katika ule mti and they laid him in a tomb wakamweka kaburini all right so let's pay attention from verse 30 haya tumakinike kwa mstari wa 30 but god raised him from the dead lakini mungu akamfufua katika wafu and he was seen many days of them which came up with him from galilee to jerusalem akaonekana siku nyingi na wale waliopanda naye kutoka galilaya hadi yerusalemu to be exact Yerusalem. this was a period of 40 days hii ilikuwa ni siku ya 40 muda wa siku 40 where he appeared and showed himself alive to his disciples. Alionekana akijidhihirisha kuwa hai kwa wanafunzi wake. All right, he says, which came up with him from Galilee who are his, his witnesses unto the people. Ambao sasa ndio walio mashahidi wake mbele ya watu. All right. Please pay very close attention. Kuwa makini kwa hii mistari. And we declare to you glad tidings how that the promise which was made to the fathers na sisi tunawahubiri habari njema ya ahadi ile waliopewa mababa has fulfilled the same to us their children ya kwamba Mungu amewatimizia watoto wetu ahadi hiyo in that he has raised up Jesus again kwa kumfufua Yesu what is the subject mada anayoongelea ni nini hello class what is the subject the resurrection of who? Paul is saying 
Paulo anasema that in raising Christ from the dead he has fulfilled the promise that he made to our Jewish forefathers. Ya kwamba kwa kumfufua Kristo kutoka kwa wafu Mungu alitimiza ahadi aliyopatia na listen to this. Sikiza hii. As it is also written in the second psalm. Kama vile ilivyoandikwa katika Zaburi ya pili. Which psalm did we read before we got here? Zaburi ya pili. Second? Okay. As it also written in the second psalm kama vile ilivyoandikwa katika Zaburi ya pili You are my son wewe ndiwe mwanangu This day have I begotten you Mimi leo nimekuzaa hmm. So the day that he was begotten kwa hivyo siku ambayo alizaliwa is not his incarnation sio siku aliyokuja katika mwili wa binadamu at the resurrection ni siku aliyofufuka and that's really significant because i said the resurrection of jesus ne. is the foundation of the new birth hiyo ni muhimu sana kwa sababu nimesema ufufuo kristo ndio msingi wa wokovu let me backtrack i want to make sure we're all on the same wacha nirudi nyuma kidogo ndio nihakikishe before Kisi jesus became a man he existed as god kabla yesu kufanyika mwanadamu alikuepo kama mungu he became a man for the purpose of salvation alifanyika mwanadamu kwa ajili ya wokovu at his incarnation god became a man katika kujitweka mwili mungu alifanyika mwanadamu and the title son of god in that sense can be used to describe god becoming a what na hiyo kuitwa mwana wa mungu ina Ashiria ile wakati ambapo Mungu alifanyika mwanadamu. But Psalms 27 is very specific. Lakini Zaburi 2 mstari wa 7 inalenga mahali fulani. Inasema his birth at the resurrection. Inaongea kuhusu yeye akizaliwa wakati wa ufufuo. Him being born. Now this may shock some people when they hear it but just inaweza washitua. Inaweza washitua watu wengine wakisikia lakini shock absorbers. Thibiti. Jesus Yesu was born again aliokoka kama alizaliwa upya wakati wa ufufuo Is the shock mwebeti <laughs> mshtuko <laughs> At the resurrection katika ufufuo When God said today have I begotten you which day was that when God raised him wakati Mungu alipomfufua from the dead kutoka kwa wafu This is why there's another passage that describes him as the firstborn from the dead Hii ndio maana kuna mahali pengine maandiko inamuelezea kuwa mzaliwa wa kwanza kutoka kwenye mauti Hallelujah. Amen. I'm really trying to stand. Najaribu kusimama. Things are hot here. Mambo yameshika joto. Let's go to Colossians chapter number 1 verse 15. Twende wa Kolosai sura ya kwanza mstari wa 15. Colossians 1:15. Wa Kolosai Then we come back to that one we, we were. 15 alafu tutarudi pale tulikuwa. Thank you Lord Jesus. Verse 18. We could read from 15 but let me just jump to 18. Colossians 1:18. Tusome mstari wa 18. And he is the head of the body. Naye ndiye kichwa cha mwili. Not this physical body. Sio mwili huu wa asilia. The body there is referring to the gathering of all believers. Huu mwili hapa inamaanisha mkusanyiko wa wote ule wote. So we have our head. Kwa hivyo tuko na kichwa chetu. Jesus Christ. Yesu Kristo. Who is the beginning? ambaye ndiye mwanzo listen to this description of jesus the first born from the Yesu dead anaelezewa hapa yeye ndiye mwanzo na ni mzaliwa wa kwanza katika wafu it does not say the only begotten from the dead hapa isemi yeye ndiye mzaliwa pekee kutoka kwa wafu when he became a man alipofanyika mwanadamu that title only begotten 
Hapo ndiyo alikuwa mzaliwa wa pekee. Applies to the incarnation. Inahusu alipojivika mwili wa kibinadamu. Uniquely born. Akiwa mezaliwa na kuzaliwa kwa kipekee. Of a virgin. Na mwanamke bikira. And a supernatural conception. Katika kutungwa mimba wa kiungu. So we say uniquely born of God. Kwa hivyo tunasema alizaliwa kwa njia ya pekee. Incarnation. Alijitweka mwili wa binadamu. Incarnation. Kujitweka mwili wa kibinadamu. But at the resurrection lakini katika ufufuo it does not say only begotten of god haisemi yeye ndiye mzaliwa pekee wa mungu the term is first born from the dead neno linalotumika ni kwamba yeye ni mzaliwa wa kwanza and pastor Kwa peter knows the greek word which is a very long one proto no. something 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 mchungaji petro ndiye anajua hiyo greek sisi bado the word it's not this is the idea of a prototype yes ni kama mtu kuwa mfano ama kitu ambacho ni mfano kwa ajili ya wengine You know when when you are in manufacturing eh? wakati katika utengenezaji wa bidhaa people who love cars here let me see your hands watu, watu wa magari, magari kama uko na gari watu wenye wanaweza tuambia model number yeah. year of manufacture yes <laughs> The different special editions of the please lift your hand we we need your input now tunataka utusaidie hapa This passion of yours is going to help us now hii <laughs> itatusaidia hapa When they are manufacturing a car you design first what's called a prototype Wakati gari linatengenezwa wanatengeneza lile gari ambalo And every other car is modeled after that prototype Na hizo magari zingine zote baada ya hapo zitakuwa na mfano so when it says he's the first born from the dead Kwa hivyo wakati nasema yeye ndiye mzaliwa kwanza kutoka kwa wafu All others who will believe on him are going to be modeled after him Maana yake ni kwamba wengine wote watakaomwamini watakuwekwa katika mfano wake Amen Hallelujah Amen They will be what modeled after him watakuwa katika mfano wake yeye glory be to god amen glory be to god amen This is why the resurrection is so significant. Hii ndio maana ufufuo ni muhimu sana. Without it there is no new birth. Pasipo ufufuo hakuna kuokoka ama kuzaliwa upya. Yes, thank you for that mm. correction. Kuzaliwa upya. The new birth. So I want you to write this down in your notebooks. Nataka uandike hivi kwa daftari. Another way to say born again, je nyingine ya kusema kuokoka is to say I am made alive with Christ. Ni kusema nimefanyika hai na Kristo. Or I am resurrected with Christ. Ama nimefufuliwa pamoja na Kristo. Those two things are not separate from each other. Hizo vitu viwili si tofauti moja kwa nyingine. And I want to take this time to really show you that to be born of God na nataka nichukue wakati huku kuonyesha kwamba kuzaliwa kwa Mungu. And to say you are risen with Christ na kusema umefufuliwa pamoja na Kristo. Is one and the same thing. Ni jambo moja. Since we have established that Jesus was born of God at the resurrection. Kwa sababu born again at the resurrection. Tumekwisha kuonyesha kwamba Yesu Kristo alifanyika kiumbe kipya ama alizaliwa upya katika ufufuo. And hopefully we will look at the character of the resurrection life today. Na pia tutaona tabia za maisha ya ufufuo. It's what we often refer to as the fruit of the kila ambacho tunaita kila mara kwamba ndio tunda la roho I'm, I'm really trying to compose because I, things are exploding on the inside of <laughs> kuna vitu zinalipuka I'm t- <laughs> You need to give that you need to put context to that jack <laughs> Anamaanisha kwamba anahisi ni kama no. kuna kitu Mungu anafanya anasikia ndani mwake ni kama vitu zinalipuka. <laughs> Amen. Mambo inachemuka. <laughs> eh ama mambo inachemuka kwa roho. Hmm? Hmm? Okay, one thing I've learned. Kile kitu nimejifunza. When when it's the Holy Ghost teaching you the word of God is always new. 
wakati roho wa Mungu ndiye anakufunza neno la Mungu kila mara so ni mpya say, but we've had you share this before it's really new for me today ndio unaweza sema kwamba tumesikia siku revelation lakini leo ni mpya tena ni pastor g in fact alan was emphasizing the need for us to pursue understanding ndio maana mchungaji gloria alikuwa anaelezea mwanzo kwamba umuhimu wa kutafuta ufahamu wa neno juu ya vitu vingine vyote haleluya amen Glory be to God. Amen. Ha. Kera mate. Could we just speak in tongues for a few minutes? I I will continue, I promise. Tutaendelea hebu nena katika ndimi kidogo. I must continue with the teaching. But first help me to compose myself. Kindly let's speak in tongues. Kwanza nena katika ndimi kidogo. Few minutes. So shall I. Hey. Kara ba hashata ba ye. Okay. Thank you Lord Jesus. Spirit of God we are grateful allow me to please share this Hey kara mahasia kala bahasati Thank you Lord Jesus Kura mashikara bakasata baye Glory to God Hallelujah All right Hallelujah So I want you to write down this question how did God raise Jesus from the dead Nataka uandike hili swali chini. Je, ni namna gani Mungu alimfufua Kristo Because we are going to see the same way he raised Jesus from the dead. Kwa sababu tutaona kwamba jinsi vile alivyomfufua Kristo kutoka kwa wafu. He's also the same way he raises us up together with Christ. Same way. Ndivyo hivyo pia sisi anatuinua na kutufufua pamoja na Kristo. Only one difference. Tofauti ni moja peke yake that our bodies are not yet resurrected. Ya kwamba sisi mili yetu bado haijafufuliwa. Let me say that again. Wacha nirudie hivi. The same way God raised Jesus from the dead, jinsi ile ile Kristo alifufuliwa na Mungu kutoka kwa wafu. Ushering him into newness of life, ikimuingiza katika upya wa uzima, giving him a new body, ikimpa mwili mpya. It is the same with us. Ni vivyo hivyo na sisi. The only difference tofauti ya pekee. We don't yet have a resurrected body. Ni kwamba sisi bado hatujapewa mwili uliofufuliwa. So we are those who are born again, children of the resurrection, ushered into a newness of life. Kwa hivyo sisi ni wale ambao tumezaliwa mara ya pili, watoto tumeingiwa katika uzima. Waiting, bado tuangoja. Waiting for God to resurrect our bodies. Tukingoja tu kwamba Mungu pia atafufua miili zetu. Yes. Mm. But being ushered into a newness of life takes place the day you receive Jesus. Lakini kuingizwa katika upya wa uzima inafanyika wakati how God does it. So, Tutaona how did God raise Jesus from the dead? Let's jump over to Romans chapter 8. Warumi sura ya 8. Verse number 11. Mstari wa 11. What does it say? But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, lakini ikiwa roho yake yeye aliyemfufua Yesu katika wafu anakanda ni yenu, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Yeye aliyemfufua Kristo Yesu katika wafu atahuisha na miili yenu ili katika katika hali ya mili yenu katika hali ya kufa kwa roho wake anayekanda ni yenu. So from that verse we see God raised Jesus from the dead. Kwa hivyo kutoka kwa huu mstari tunaona Mungu alimuinua Yesu kutoka kwa wafu through the agency of his spirit. Kupitia huduma ya roho wake. You know God does many things through his spirit. <laughs> Unajua Mungu anafanya mambo mengi kupitia roho wake. Before when you read the creation account the bible tells us that the holy ghost was hovering over the face of the deep. Ukisoma jinsi ambavyo ulimwengu liumbwa Biblia nasema kwamba roho wa Mungu alikuwa anazunguka kama amekuwa juu ya Some bible scholars say the spirit of God is likened to the creative force or God's creative power though he's a person. Wasomi wengine wanasema roho wa Mungu ijapokuwa yeye ni mtu lakini yeye pia ndio nguvu za uumbaji za Mungu. We also see that God gives revelation through the Holy Spirit. All that we know about God comes to us by revelation. Scripture is inspired it's by revelation but it's the Holy Spirit that God supplies revelation through to people. Na pia tunajua kwamba ni kupitia roho mtakatifu ya kwamba tunapokea ufunuo kutoka kwa neno la Mungu. But also God 
quickens. Lakini pia Mungu anauisha ama God anafanya kuwa hai. makes alive. Anafanya kuwa hai. God resurrects. Anafufua. Both physically katika hali ya kimwili kawaida and spiritually na pia kiroho through the power of the holy spirit kupitia nguvu za roho mtakatifu so how did god raise jesus from the dead kwa hivyo mungu through his spirit yesu kristo kupitia roho mtakatifu how does god resurrect us spiritually mungu anatufufua namna gani kiroho it would also be through his what pia his spirit ni kupitia roho wake mtakatifu titus chapter number 3 kitabu cha Tito sura ya tatu. And remember we saw in the case of Jesus when he was resurrected from the dead that's the day God said to him today you are my son. Nakumbuka tuliona katika hali ya Yesu ile siku alipofufuliwa kutoka kwa wafu ndipo Mungu alisema so wewe ni mwanangu. So it is with us. Ndivyo ilivyo na When we are quickened wakati tumeuishwa. When we are resurrected spiritually wakati tumefufuliwa kiroho. That is also the day we say you are born again. Hiyo pia ndio wakati tunasema umezaliwa upya. Titus chapter number 3, Tito sura ya tatu. verse number 5, mstari wa 5 and verse number 6, na mstari wa 6. I really want us to hear this in the Swahili. It says, not by works of righteousness which we have done. Inasema si kwa sababu ya matendo ya haki tuliyoyatenda sisi, but according to his mercy he saved us. Bali kwa rehema yake kwa kuoshwa ametuokoa uh-huh. by the washing of regeneration kwa kuoshwa kwa kuzaliwa kwa pili kwa kuoshwa kwa kuzaliwa kwa pili kwa pili mm. and the renewing of the holy spirit na kufanywa upya na roho mtakatifu which holy spirit he gave to us through jesus christ our savior ambaye alitumwagia kwa wingi kwa njia ya Yesu Kristo mwokozi wetu. Hmm. Hmm. Kwa wingi. Kwa wingi. Haleluya. So, kwa wingi sana. The spirit of God is the one that regenerates. Kwa hivyo roho wa Mungu ndiye anafanya upya. Another way to say regenerate is the one that quickens. Je, nyingine ya kusema anafanya upya ni kusema anatupa uhai. Makes you alive together with Christ. Anatuisha katika Kristo Yesu. At the point you are quickened wakati unapouishwa we say you are born of God tunasema umezaliwa naye Mungu the same way when Jesus was resurrected vile tu ambavyo Yesu alipofufuliwa that verse was fulfilled the lord has said to me today you are my son i have begotten you huo mstari ulitimia ambao unasema wewe ni mwanangu nimekuzaa leo so it leo. is with us ndivyo ilivyo na sisi we hear the gospel tunasikia injili about Jesus' death kuhusu kifo cha Kristo and Jesus' resurrection na ufufuo wa Kristo we recognize he is the prototype tunatambua kwamba sisi tutafanyika kwa when we put our wakati. trust in him tunapomtumainia yeye the spirit of god indwells us roho wa mungu anakuja na kanda yetu and he quickens us together with christ anatuisha ama anatufanya upya pamoja na kristo yesu aka yes. we are born again kwa maneno mengine tumefanyika kuzaliwa we are born pia. of god tumezaliwa naye mungu so Could somebody give me a date when they received Jesus? Let me just see. By three people. When did you receive Jesus? Mtu atuambia wakati aliokoka. June 15th which year? 2016. So, for Minister Judy on June 15th 2016, Psalms 27 was fulfilled. Katika hiyo tarehe ulipookoka, huo mstari wa Zaburi 2:7 ulitimia. Please follow along with me. Because that is the day she was quickened. Kwa sababu hiyo ndio siku aliyoishwa. That's the day she was resurrected together with Christ. Hiyo ndio siku alifufuliwa pamoja na Kristo. That is the day God also said to her, you who has believed in Christ today, I have begotten you. Hiyo pia ndio siku Mungu alimwambia wewe ambaye umemwamini Kristo leo hii nimekuzaa. The new birth is not a Christian denomination. Kuzaliwa upya sio dini ya Kikristo. I will repeat this thing until we get it. Nitarudia mpaka tuielewe. It's not I am a Catholic. Haimaanishi kusema I am Anglican. Mimi ni Mkatolika. I am Protestant. Mimi ni Mprotestant. I'm Pentecostal. Mimi ni Mpentecostal. I am born again. Sasa mimi pia ni mzaliwa wa No. No. La, sio hivyo. It is did you hear the gospel? Ni kwamba je, ulisikia injili ndio? Did you believe in Jesus? 
Yes. Ulimwamini Yesu ndio. Then the spirit of God indwelt you, regenerated you, made you alive. That's the day you got born again. Hivyo basi roho wa Mungu aliingia ndani mwako, akakaa ndani yako, akakufanya kuzaliwa kupya. Your decision to subscribe to a denomination is up to you. Wewe uamuzi wa dini gani utaenda, hiyo ni yako sasa. Stop confusing it with the new birth. Wacha kuchanganyisha na kuzaliwa upya. It's not a denomination. Sio dini. It's you. Ni wewe. Ephesians chapter 2. Wa Efeso sura ya 2. Kora mashika talamandes. Ephesians chapter 2. Wa Efeso sura ya 2. Ha. Ephesians 2 from 4 to verse number 6. Hadi wa 6. Kora mashika sata baye. Rabashiko robo sota la mandes. Ephesians 2. Wa Efeso from 4 to 6. What does it say? But God who is rich in mercy. Lakini mungu kwa kuwa ni mungu wa rehema. For his great love wherewith he loved us. Kwa mapenzi yake makuwa liyo tupenda. Even when we were dead in sins. Hata wakati ule tulipo kwa wafu kwa sababu ya makosa yetu. What was our state prior to receiving Christ? We were dead in sins. Hali yetu kabla Wait a minute. Yesu tulikuwa wafu. Weren't we wafu. walking? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Weren't we talking? Tulikuwa tunaongea. Weren't we eating? Tulikuwa tunakula. So obviously this is describing a different kind of death. Hii inamaanisha tulikuwa tumekufa ina fulani ya kifo tofauti. It's not physical death. Sio kifo cha kawaida cha kimwili. We were dead in our sins. Tulikuwa tumekufa katika dhambi zetu. So just for ease of understanding we will call it spiritual death. Ili ndio tuelewe kwa urahisi tutaita kifo cha kiroho. God, let's read together guys. Tusome pamoja. God made us alive together with Christ. Mungu alituisha pamoja na Kristo. So Christ's resurrection was not just for his sake. Kwa hivyo fufuo wa Kristo haikuwa kwa ajili yake. He is the prototype yeye ndiye kiumbe ambacho ni sisi ni mfano God's idea was I raise one <laughs> Mawazo ya Mungu ilikuwa ni kwamba mtafufua mmoja kwa ajili ya wote wafaidike He is the prototype Yeye ndiye sisi So that if you look to him and believe that he died and rose you are identified with the prototype Kwa hivyo ukimtazama na umwamini alikufa you, kwa ajili yako You are mafua. raised up though you are dead Ijapo kwa ulikuwa umekufa You are raised up together with Christ unafufuliwa pamoja na Kristo being ushered into newness of life na unaingizwa katika upya wa maisha and that is the work of the holy spirit na hiyo ni kazi ya roho mtakatifu that is the new birth hivyo ndio kuzaliwa mara ya pili and let me add this no man on earth can make you born again na wacha niongeze kwa kusema kwamba hakuna mwanadamu hapa duniani anaweza kukufanya uzaliwa mara ya pili is to preach the gospel that leads you to believe in Jesus kazi yetu ni kuhubiri injili ambayo inakuelekeza kumwamini Yesu but the actual regeneration lakini ile kufanywa upya haswa the resurrection spiritually ile kufufuliwa kiroho only the spirit of god does that roho wa Mungu pekee anaweza fanya hivyo I don't even want to go to the other part that says and made us sit together because now there we'll jump into the believers authority. <laughs> Today let me just focus on we are raised up together with Christ. Wacha nilenge hapa ya kwamba tumefufuliwa pamoja na Kristo. When Jesus said go and raise the dead. Wakati Yesu alisema enda mfufue wafu. It has two meanings. Maana yake ni mbili. Number 1 mara ya kwanza the physically dead wale ambao wamekufa katika mwili i know that because the apostles also raised people who are dead physically najua hiyo kwa sababu hata mitume pia waliofufua waliokufa kimwili but you see even people who are raised physically lakini unajua hata watu ambao wanafufuliwa kimwili if they don't get born again <laughs> wasipo zaliwa mara ya pili pia watakufa so that that instruction has two meanings raise the physically dead but it also means kwa hivyo ina maana mbili. As you preach the gospel. Maana ya pili ni kwamba unapohubiri When men njili. hear the gospel and believe. Wakati wanadamu wanasikia injili na kuamini, they will be quickened. Watauishwa ndani yao. At the new birth. Katika kuzaliwa mara ya pili. From death wanatolewa mauti. Come on guys, what does it say? We know we have passed from death Maandiko inasema to life. ya kwamba tunajua tumepita kutoka kwa mauti tumeingia katika uzima. 
Let me say this. If Wacha Jesus was hivu. not raised from the dead, kama Yesu hangeza kufufuliwa kwa wafu, you could not be born again. Haungeweza kuokoka. The foundation of the new birth is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Msingi wa kuzaliwa upya ni ufufuo wa Kristo Yesu. Brother Jack, I'm going to give you an offering. Your translation is very serious. Your interpretation is very serious. Asante sana sana. Hey. <laughs> I must transfer it after the end of this service. Hallelujah. Even me who doesn't know Swahili well, I'm understanding. I'm like, hmm, yeah. <laughs> Guys, are we understanding this? <clears throat> Herein lies the problem. I want to explain to you the Christian's problem. Pastor A Christian Mkristo is one who is spiritually resurrected. Yeye ni yule ambaye katika kiroho amefufuliwa. Born of God, amezaliwa na Mungu. With a mind that's not renewed, na mawazo ambayo haijafanywa upya. Living inside a mortal body. Anaishi katika mwili ambao siku moja utakufa. Living in a world, na anaishi katika ulimwengu. That's full of unbelief. <laughs> ambayo imejaa kutoamini. Yes, and ungodliness. Mm. Na dhambi. Let me I want to repeat that again because I want to show you why many believers have an identity crisis. Nataka Let me repeat what I've said. Nitarudia ili uweze kuelewa ni kwa nini saa zingine wa Kristo hatujielewi. A Christian, Mkristo, is one who is spiritually resurrected. Ni mtu ambaye kiroho ameshafufuliwa na Mungu. Indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Roho wa Mungu anaishi ndani yake. Born of the Most High God. Amezaliwa na Mungu, Mungu ni baba yake. In their spirit, na katika roho yake, is the fullness of the resurrection life kuna ukamilifu wa uzima wa ufufuo plus the power of the resurrection life pamoja na nguvu za ufufuo however they have an unrenewed mind lakini mawazo yao haijafanywa upya because regeneration did not touch your mind kwa sababu kufanywa upya haikuguza akili zako ama mawazo yako that is an ongoing work we are const- why are we gathered here to, to study the bible kufanywa upya kwa mawazo yako ndio kwa sababu tuko hapa Ine, ni kazi inaendelea this is this is why we are here hiyo ndio sababu tuko hapa. To help you renew your mind to who you've become. Kukusaidia mawazo yako ifanywe upya uelewe umefanyika nani. Okay. Mm. But they also live in a mortal body. Lakini pia wa Kristo wanaishi katika mwili wa mauti ambao utakufa siku moja. And they live in a world na tunaishi katika ulimwengu that's dominated by ungodliness. Ambayo imetawaliwa na dhambi, maisha. Let me add this. Tukua na utawa. A world that does not recognize them for who they truly are dunia ambayo haiwatambui jinsi walivyo katika so Mungu. So this is the challenge of the believer. Kwa hivyo hiyo ndio changamoto ya Mkristo. God says, Mungu anasema, you are my child. Wewe ni mwanangu. Like father like son. Wewe uko kama baba kama mwana. My wonderful attributes are actually in you. Zile tabia zangu za kipekee ziko ndani mwako kwa sababu umezaliwa upya. You read that in the Bible. Unasoma hiyo katika Biblia. And there is an inward witness from the Holy Spirit. Na kuna ushahidi wa ndani kutoka kwa Roho Mtakatifu. Open Romans 8:16. Fungua Warumi 8:16. Because we only have two reference points to know who you are. Kwa sababu kuna njia mbili tu ya pekee kujijua jinsi tulivyo katika Kristo. And Christo. your feelings are not those two. Na jinsi unavyohisi sio moja wapo wa hizo njia mbili. Let me repeat that again. Wacha nirudie. <laughs> The believer only has two reference points concerning who they have become. Only two. Mkristo ako na njia mbili ya kujitambua jinsi alivyo katika Kristo. Only mbili pekee. Uh, uh, yeah. If I if if you can get this my work is done we'll call it a day. Ukielewa hii kazi yetu itakuwa imeisha. Done. Tutamalizia hapo. You only have two reference points. Kuna jinsi For the ladies who are here in very beautiful makeup, I'm going to use a language you understand. Kwa wadada ambao wako hapa na vipodozi nzuri. You only have two mirrors. Tuko na jinsi viombili peke yake. Two mirrors to help you know what you look like. Vioni mbili peke yake kukusaidia kujielewa. 
The first mirror is the witness of the scriptures. Kio cha kwanza ni ushahidi wa maandiko. Because these words are inspired by the Holy Spirit and he has spoken about your identity here. Kwa sababu haya maandiko yamechochewa na Roho Mtakatifu na maongea jinsi ulivyo hapa. Second mirror is what we call an inner witness. Kio cha pili ni kile tunaita ushahidi wa ndani. Please read Romans 8:16. Tafadhali soma Warumi 8:16. It says the Spirit himself Inasema roho mwenyewe bears witness with our spirit hushuhudia pamoja na roho zetu that we are truly the children of God ya kuwa sisi tu watoto wa Mungu so only two witnesses kwa hivyo tuko na mashahidi wawili pekee if you want to know <laughs> ukitaka who kujua, you really are wewe ni nani haswa only two mashahidi ni wawili pekee he the inspired word Neno ambalo liko na pumzi ya Mungu and the holy ghost together with your spirit in a witness telling you you are really a child of God. Na roho mtakatifu you are really born na roho wa, wako wanashuhudia kwamba wewe hakika ni mtoto wa Mungu. Now sasa your feelings are not part of those witnesses. Fi, ma hisia zako sio sehemu ya hao mashahidi wawili. This is why hii ndio manake If I tell you right now you have all the joy of God on the inside of you many of you are going to look at me and say <laughs> Nikikwambia sasa hivi uko na furaha yote bwana ndani Even my neighbor I'm seeing the way they are vibrant I have joy Le bashaka then you say I have joy but in your mind you're like no I'm pretending there's no katika akili zako there's no joy au amini utajiambia ah najidanganyisha You know where the struggle is Unajua vita ziko wapi You are a resurrected person wewe ni mtu aliyefufuliwa kiroho with the mind emotions that are not renewed lakini mawazo na hisia zako living in a physical opi. body unaishi katika mwili huwa kawaida and with an ungodly world that does not recognize who you really are katika ulimwengu wa dhambi ambao haukutambui kwa jinsi ulivyo so we default back to our feelings kwa hivyo tunarudi katika hali ya hisia zetu the fruit of the spirit are spiritual realities not emotions or feelings tunda la kiroho ni hakika za kiroho sio hisia za kimwili you don't sense them with your five senses hauwezi kuhisi na hisia zako tano za you don't kawaida. contact your feelings how i will i will Ausikizi hisia zako. Only two reference points. I'm almost done. Don't worry. I'm almost Kuna done. Only two reference peke. points. Mashahidi wawili pekee. The inner witness of the Holy Spirit. Ushahidi wa ndani wa Roho Mtakatifu and the scriptures. Pamoja na maandiko. That's all that has been given to us. Hiyo ndiyo yote tumepewa. So for many of us this is what happens. Kwa hivyo wengi wetu hivi ndiyo inafanyika. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. Mimi ni kiumbe kipya katika Kristo Yesu. Where did you get that information from? The what? Ulitoa wapi hiyo habari katika maandiko? As you speak in tongues, you have an inner we. Unaponena katika ndimi uko na ushahidi wa kutoka ndani kwa roho. When you step out, somebody insults you and it triggers your what? Your fear? Ukitoka nje mtu akutukane inachochea hisia zako. And you immediately forget what manner of man Mara hiyo hiyo unasahau wewe ni mtu wa aina gani? That you are. Mm. And you give katika you roho. yield yourself to the emotion. Unajisalimisha kwa hizo hisia. To make it worse, na you have people around you who zaidi. say What do you mean new creation? I know you. Kuna watu karibu na wewe unasema ni nini unasema tukuokoka nini wewe tunakujua bana. Tunakujua. First John 3:1 Yohana wa kwanza Let me ask moja. a question. What Let me ask a question. When Jesus on earth spoke of his identity, wakati Yesu akiwa hapa duniani aliongea kwa kutambulisha chake. Did he face opposition? Je, yes. alikutana na upingamizi? Was he called mad? Je, ali, yes. aliitwa majina? Mm. First John 3:1. There's something I want us to explain there. Waraka wa Yohana wa kwanza tatu Behold what manner of love Tazameni ni pendo na namna gani The has bestowed on us ambalo baba ametupa That we should be called the what kwamba tuitwe wana wa Mungu Let me tell you the new birth is so big Wacha nikuambie kuzaliwa mara ya pili ni kubwa sana Until John was pondering it and said what kind of love is this Hadi Yohana alikuwa anatafakari anashangaa nini upendo kiasi gani His sons we are those who are begotten of God Ya kwamba Mungu sasa hivi anatuita wana wake tumezaliwa na Mungu The 
world does not know us. Alafu anasema ya kwamba ulimwengu haututambui sisi. Because it did not know him. Kwa sababu haikumtambua yeye Yesu Kristo. So if you're looking for those who are not born again to help define who you are, you're going to run into trouble. They do not know kwa hivyo you. kama unatafuta watu ambao hawajaokoka wa kusaidia kuelewa wewe ni nani utakuwa na shida kwa maana hawakutambui kiroho. Second Corinthians chapter 5 before verse 17 it says Wa Korintho wa pili Though we knew Christ tano, from a natural point of view inasema kwamba mwanzo tulimjua Kristo kimwili after his resurrection we no longer regard him from a natural point of view baada ya kufufuka kwake hatumtambui tena kutokana na hali ya kikawaida ya kimwili then it now says therefore if any man be in Christ Jesus alafu inasema basi mtu yeyote akiwa ndani ya Kristo Yesu he is a new creature amefanyika kwa kiumbe kipya a new creature kiumbe kipya let me help you understand it this way. Wacha nikusaidie uelewe hivi. A creature hivi. that has never existed before. Kiumbe ambacho hakijawahi kukuwepo mwanzo. A creature that mwanzo. emerges from the resurrection. Kiumbe ambacho kinaibuka kutokana kwa ufufuo wa Kristo. This is why I have a problem with generational curses. Hii ndio maana kuna shida ukiongea kuhusu lana za kijamii. This is why I have a problem with it. Because it undermines the power of the new birth. Mambo ya laana za kijamii inasababisha usielewe jinsi wokovu iko na nguvu. Yes sir. There is a strong word that's come to me. Kuna neno lenye nguvu ambalo limenikujia. Stop chasing mirages. You know what a mirage is in the desert? Eh? Wacha kufukuzana na You know what a mirage is? Mm. <laughs> Actually that is what it is. <laughs> In a desert you can start hallucinating. You start seeing things because of I don't know, scientists will help. Katika jangwa za kawaida. There's oxygen, I don't know what happens to you. Unaona bahari zenye zipo. Shida tu hatuna desert kubwa huku so Kenya nasema iko strange kwa watu. Have you seen movies where somebody is in the desert then they see a whole city with water they say, "Eh, hey, umaiona katika filamu." I'm filami. saved. Katika As they run you go to drink the water you are drinking sand you say mtu wako kwa jangwa na naona bahari ya maji a mirage unakuta ni mchanga hiyo ni vitu visivyokuepo for many of us we would rather listen to anything else other than the truth of who we've become in Christ shida ya watu wengi ni kwamba afadhali tusikize mambo mengine na isipokuwa ukweli wa jinsi tumefanyika katika Kristo It takes effort to believe who you've become. Inagarimu bidi kuelewa jinsi ambavyo umefanyika. Because you're going against Christ. your feelings. Kwa sababu unaenda kinyume na hisia zako. You're going against what other people say you are. Unaenda kinyume na vile watu wengine wanasema wewe ni nani. The only thing you have to go by is the word of God and the witness of the Holy Spirit. Vitu za pekee ambazo unaenda nazo ni neno la Mungu na ushahidi wa Mungu. You're like takati. someone swimming against the current. Wewe ni kama mtu ambaye anapiga mbizi kinyume na mawimbi. Ndio maana ni I listen to your teaching. Nilisikiza mafunzo yako. Oh yes I did. It really blessed me. Nilisikiza ikanijenga. I, I want to use that because it, it's it's relevant here. She said something remarkable. She said Kuna kitu ambacho Peter alisema, at one point receives mm-hmm. revelation. Alisema Petero wakati mmoja anapokea ufunuo, you are the Christ the son of the living God. Anasema kwamba wewe ni Kristo mwana wa Mungu aliyehai. And just a few moments later. Dakika <laughs> chache baadaye. Hmm? He's telling Jesus you can't die you are joking you will not die. Anaambia Yesu huwezi kufa wewe bana. And Jesus told him Satan be far from you. Not that he was possessed by Satan he was accommodating a thought. Yesu alimkemea si kwamba alifanyika kuwa shetani kwa sababu That wasn't inspired. Alikuwa anachukua mawazo ambayo si kutoka kwa roho. One moment in this service as I'm sharing the Holy Ghost is ministering someone you are really a new creation. Wakati neno linakuja and there's somebody who is receiving his say even with tears. Na kuna mtu anatokwa na machozi akisema kweli mimi ni kiumbe kipya. As they live here. Na akitoka hapa. <laughs> As I live here. <laughs> Anapotoka hapa. He just find the same person who was in this meeting. Utakutana tu na huyo huyo mtu aliyekuwa katika huu mkutano. My friend. Mm. Wewe ndugu yangu. I can put off salvation and deal with you right now. Na zatoa hii wokovu nikushughulikie sasa hivi. I 
until we settle the identity thing, our Christian walk will be up. Mpaka tutakapoelewa up kitambulisho chetu katika wokovu. Maisha yetu ya wokovu inakuwa juu chini. Juu chini. There are many pieces to the puzzle called walking in the spirit. Kuna visehemu mingi kadhaa katika kuelewa of, kutembea katika some, roho. I noted this is why some preachers find it hard to explain what walking in the spirit is. Niligundua kwamba hivi kwa sababu wahubiri wengine wanaipata kwa number of things it's not just one thing. Si tu kitu kimoja ni vitu kadhaa. And one of the pieces of that puzzle has got to do with identity. Na moja wapo ya hizo vitu ni kujitambua katika Kristo wewe ni nani. Pastor G said something. You know if you Mtungaji speak in Gloria tongues alisema alone, alisema ukiongea tu katika dini pekee yake. Without an awareness of your identity, pasipo ufahamu wa kitambulisho chako cha kiroho kama Kristo. You will Christo. not see the fullness. Hauwezi kuona ukamilifu of the new nature. Wa ile Something is missing. Kwa kiumbe kipia. It's like you're engaging your spirit mara your spirit is speaking charged. Ni kama roho wako anashika your mind is disagreeing toto. I'm not really a new creature. Mawazo yako I'm not really a new creature. Inapinga inasema hapana ni. And so your spirit man has a limitation. Kwa hivyo roho wako ndani anakuwa na kizuizi. Whereas when you renew your mind and say really I am a new creature and I t- th- let me say this lakini ukifanyika upya katika mawazo na ukubali kwamba hakika mimi you forget anything don't forget this one ukisahau vitu vingine vyote tafadhali kumbuka reference points kuna vitu mbili ama mashahidi wawili pekee the scriptures kumbuka hii and the witness of the holy spirit maandiko na ushahidi wa roho wa Mungu ndani yako if you're fortunate to have believers around you na kama umebarikiwa kuwa na wateule kwa karibu na wewe of the holy ghost and can keep reminding you but you are a new creation you are blessed wanatumika na roho wa Mungu wanashinda wakikukumbusha kwamba lakini wewe ni kiumbe kipya you are blessed umebarikiwa you want to overcome sin and you you still believe you are a sinner you see this is where the challenge is unataka kushinda dhambi lakini mawazo yako inaamini wewe bado ni mtadhamu you've not believed you are a new creature haujaamini kwamba wewe ni kiumbe kipya hapo ndio kuna changamoto can i say this let me use this illustration wacha niseme hii nitumie huu mfano for many believers kwa wakristo wengi the finish line is one day i'll become a child of god one day how fikiria kwamba siku moja nitafanya kwa Cuz what are they mwana. looking at their soul their unrenewed mind their kwa emotions Kwa sababu wanatazama mawazo yao nafsi yao mawazo ambayo hayajapata But the truth is lakini ukweli ni kwamba The day you believed in Jesus you got born again Siku ambayo ulimwamini Kristo ulizaliwa mara ya pili What's happening is your mind is being retrained reprogrammed Kinachoendelea ni kwamba mawazo yako inafundishwa upya Adjust kupia. to this new reality Kuweza kukubaliana na hii hali iliyopo sasa The Bible says they are born not of flesh not of blood nor of the will of man but they are born of God Biblia inasema hawakuzaliwa kwa mapenzi ya mwanadamu ama kwa damu You can't kwa identify with your physical lineage anymore its merits and its demerits Hawezi kujitambulisha Let me add that. na mambo yake Even its advantages hata faida zenu za kiukoo hazikusaidii Don't really apply to the new birth hazikusaidii kama kiumbe kipya What you inheriting is purely from God Kila ambacho unaridhi sasa kimetoka kwa Mungu It is the cleanest slate you can ever have Ume the new birth. Upya kabisa hakuna njia nyingine ya kwanza upya kuliko hiyo. It is why I have the confidence to go to a convict in prison and tell him if you believe in Jesus you will be born again. Ndio manake niko na ujasiri wa kwenda katika And from that point that person is resurrected with Christ and is really really na huyo mtu really kwa hakika kikweli a new creature. Anafanyika kiumbe kipya. Really kwa hakika The land may not recognize them as a new creature. Hao watu wa hapo karibu wanaweza kosa kumtambua kama kiumbe kipya. You need to serve your sentence. Anasema lazima utaendelea kuwa na kifungo chako. But from chaku. God's end. Lakini pande ya Mungu this day. Oh. Leo hii. This day. Leo hii. Have I begotten you? Nimekuzaa. So in that prison cell what starts to happen? The fruit The character of the resurrection life starts to be seen. Kwa hivyo katika hiyo jela tabia ya kiungu lile tunda la kiroho linaanza kuonekana. The guy who was hardened, murderous, unyielding, 
because of the new nature all of a sudden obeying the guards anaanza kutii wale walinzi taking up responsibility anaanza kuchukua majukumu yake people sa- something's change watu wanaanza he kuna kitu kinabadilika of the new birth hiyo ndio nguvu the new birth is also upia. deliverance kuzaliwa mara ya pili pia ndio ukombozi it is it is deliverance ndio ukombozi sasa Let's be grounded in our identity. Wacha tukite mizizi katika kitambulisho chetu katika Kristo. Don't consult your feelings, please. Usisemezane na hisia zako tafadhali. They are not accurate in informing you who you are. Haziko sahihi sana kukueleza wewe ni nani. Someone once said, mtu mmoja akasema, "Shall I think it's Pastor Jim introduced me to him, uh, Emmanuel Iron he said, kuna mchungaji Emmanuel Iron. The greatest advice I'll give to people who are married Ushauri mkubwa ambao naweza patia watu walio katika ndoa. Said this is million dollar advice. <laughs> Na hii ni ushauri ambao gharama yake inashinda milioni moja. He had me hooked I was waiting for it eh. Hey, hey. mm, Tukao tunangoja kabisa. And he said walk in the spirit. <laughs> Tembea katika roho. Mm. And you know I thought about it as like this makes so much sense. Na nilipotafakari nikaona kwamba hii ina maana kabisa. Because we don't draw from our feelings, we draw from the spiritual virtues in us. Kwa sababu hatuishi kulingana na hisia zetu, tunafaa kuishi kulingana na ile hali yetu ya kuwa katika yeah. roho. I love spiritual gifts. I love the power of the Holy Spirit. Napenda vipawa za kiroho, napenda nguvu za Roho Mtakatifu. But where I'm at today, I feel I need to really also emphasize the fruit, the character. Lakini mahali ambapo niko sasa, ninahisi pia ni muhimu kusisitiza tabia na tunda la Roho Mtakatifu. Character, fruit, tabia, tunda and it begins by you saying i really if you've accepted christ you start every day you must acknowledge this is who i am na inaanza kama umemkubali kristo lazima ukiri na ukubali kila siku ya kwamba hivi ndivyo nilivyo don't heap for yourself teachers usijikusanyie walimu don't have itching ears usikue na masikio ambayo inakuumauma kusikiza maajabu i'm not even recommending myself listen even if you don't hear me just speak a minister who tells you who you are in Christ please it doesn't even have to be me si lazima akuwe mtumishi hapa lakini akuwe mtu ambaye wewe ni nani I even feel I need to kneel down <laughs> kindly kama naweza piga magoti tafadhali so that you are not unstable ili usikue wasiwasi It doesn't have to be me. The beauty is God has very many voices that will be saying the same thing. You are a new creature, you are a new Utamu creature, you are a new creature. Mungu akuwa na sauti ama watumishi ja, wengi ja, ambao wanasema. revelation. He said God has fitted ministers for everyone. Mungu ameweka watumishi wenye watahudumia kila mtu. If you feel well, those guys maze they are too babi wanaongea too English mob mob. Mimi nataka mse ananielewa. God will send you a guy I don't know how to say new creation in Sheng what? Sheng? Mm-hmm. Sheng what? Kanairo. <laughs> God will send you a Sheng guy tell you maze when when in new creature maze. Mungu atakutumia yeah, mtu yeah. aina yako ule utendeo. Mpaka <laughs> uelewe katika kiwango chako. It, it, you I know that for, I don't like that that guy is dressed. Fine, God will send you someone with Bling six blue. piece, not even three piece suit, six piece. Mungu atakuleta aina yako. Who can tell you you are a new creature? I say, yeah, I can't believe you. You look like a man of God. <laughs> you look like a man of God. By the way, me I'm not hey, who just make sure those are the people you're listening tafadhali hakikisha hao ndio watu unasikiza wakuambie kitu because what you hear produces Christ. persuasion kwa sababu kila ambacho unasikia kinasababisha ushawishi don't make it hard for the new nature to manifest through you usifanye kukua ngumu because you're listening to funny things jitokeza kwako kwa sababu ya vitu unavyosikiza one moment i'm righteous wakati mmoja unaambiwa wewe uko haki next moment god 
Siku nyingine I'm mungu. just a worm even you know I'm a worm Mimi ni kitu bure duni so kabisa How did you move from a righteous <laughs> Ulitoka aje hapo kwa kuwa mwenye haki What is disturbing kukua you Kukua kitu tupu kitu bure Nini shida yako mpendo Mimi ni mwenye haki Mnyonge ajuezi Hatuna uwezo Let me ask something How many are men, physical men here? You know nowadays you need to clarify. Wanaume wa kweli. How many are physical men? Siku hizi mambo ni mingi, lazima ujue. When you stand and say I am a man, are you boasting? Ukisimama useme mimi ni mwanaume, ni kuringa, si kuringa, ni vile ulivyo. When you confess your identity, it's not boasting. Na ukikiri jinsi kitambulisho chako katika roho. It's actually pride to reject who God is saying you are. Kiburi ni wakati unakataa God is saying you are righteous you are saying I am a worm me am a worm Mungu God. anasema wewe ni mwenye haki wewe unasema ati wewe ni kitu bure From where God is sitting is that one is very prideful Penye Mungu ameketi anakuona ukiwa na kiburi mingi sana Because everything my son has done they have refused to accept they Kwa just... sababu kila kitu mwanangu amefanya wamekataa kukubali wanakuja tu na zao hmm? No on a serious note Kwa kumaanisha If we accept who he says we are tukikubali jinsi anasema sisi tuko we will see the fruit of the new nature tutayaona matunda ya kuwa kiumbe kipya then speaking in tongues will become complementary na kunena katika ndimi itaongezea katika because it will diyo. find a mind that's being renewed kwa sababu itapata mawazo ambayo yanafanywa upya then when you Nini add tongues kipia. it's now complementary sasa ukiongeza ndimi inaiongezea nguvu she explained something so beautiful Kuna the spirit man is trying to tell the soul vizuri. this is who you are Roho anajaribu and that process can be easier or harder depending on how the word has been allowed to shape Hiyo hali inaweza kuwa rahisi ama ngumu ikitegemea kama neno limepewa nafasi ya kuelezea mawazo yetu I'll give a chance for those who are not born again Nitapatiana nafasi kwa wale ambao hawajaokoka That is to say they have not undergone the new birth. I'll give you a chance to Au ni, ni kusema wale ambao hawajazaliwa upya. Jesus today that you may be born again. Nitakupatia nafasi ya kumpokea Kristo leo uzaliwe upya. And for the rest of us really I feel like I need to pray for first and foremost revelation. Na kwa wengine wetu nahisi kwamba ninahitaji kuombea ufunuo. That ground us. Ya kwamba Mungu kwa hakika atatusaidia kuelewa, kufahamu so that we really get it. We really and we become stable tupate kuelewa we are not tossed to and fro we become stable sikuwe watu kurusho rusho na kila aina ya mafundisho tukue dhabiti allow me i have good news niko na ujumbe mwema ama habari njema you will be tested on your identity utajaribiwa katika ah it's good news kuelewa kwako kwa kitambulisho chako ni habari njema It's very good. Ni habari njema. Apostle David the other day made us laugh. He told us, "We should stop lying to believers. Let's prepare them." Mtume Daudi hapa alituambia na wengine tuanze. We tested, we tell them and you will be tested. Tuambiane tu kweli ya kwamba utajaribiwa. Ukae ukijua. Is anyone here greater than our master Jesus? Kuna mtu hapa ni mkubwa kuliko Yesu? Hakuna. What did God tell him you are my son I'm pleased in you after a few I like that meme of SpongeBob a few moments later. Dakika Chache baadaye some gentleman just arrived and told him if you are kuna mtu alikuja akamwambia kama wewe kweli the devil just came and say if you yeah you if you are the son shetani anamwambia kama wewe kwa hakika ni mwana wa Mungu so i know because i'm not greater than jesus kwa hivyo ninajua kwa sababu mimi si mkubwa the enemy mounted a challenge concerning his identity kama shetani alisababisha pingamizi kuhusu kitambulisho chake then you who take after him in the resurrection kwa hivyo wewe ambaye unaenenda katika kama yeye katika that's fufu. also an area he's going to fight hiyo pia ni hali ambapo atakupiga vita it must find you grounded Lazima ikupate ukiwa umedhabiti umekuwa dhabiti. If you are the son of God, turn these stones. Says I don't need to prove anything to you. I know who I am. Kama we ni mwana wa Mungu, geuza haya mawe ikuwe mkate. Mimi ni mwana wa Mungu sihitaji. I don't need to demonstrate anything to you. I am settled. Si lazima ni kuonyesha. What God said is sufficient. Kile Mungu amesema inatosha. What came out of his mouth? I don't need to prove it to you. Kile ambacho kilitoka kwa mdomo wake ni kwamba si lazima kuonyesha. That's what Jesus responded to the devil. 
Hiyo ndio Yesu alimwambia shetani. So you'll also be tested on identity. Kwa hivyo wewe pia utajaribiwa kama unajielewa wewe ni nani. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good news, isn't it? Na hiyo ni habari njema. And you must overcome. Na lazima ushinde. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. That you are tested, God knows what you are made of. The apple has not fallen far from the tree. If you are born of the Most High, He knows you must overcome. Say must. You must. Yeah. You must. The irony being, you live here today with a conviction, I am a child of the most high God who owns everything in heaven and earth. And as you step out, they say, by the way, you're no longer employed here. Yeah. That's not the arm kelema. Wacha nisionge kama apostle. Let me say this. That's not the time to cry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you're being tested on identity. It's very confusing, I know. You have a it's funny. Christians are very strange creatures. Wa Christo ni waajabu. Yani umetoka hapa Holy Ghost amekupatia witness you're a son of God. Wewe ni mwana wa Mungu Possessor of heaven and earth. Ambaye amemiliki El Shaddai, God of abundance. Mungu mwenye vyote. And barely 10 steps out of here. Hello? Kidogo unapigiwa I'm sorry you're no longer employed. Uh, samahani lakini ninataka kujulisha kazi yako imeisha. Where do you jump? Most of us feelings. Anxiety. Hey. Hi auntie. This is me. I know it's been a long while. <laughs> I was calling to check on you. <laughs> Could you spare? Mm -mm. Paul one time said, it's like ministers of God are on display for all principalities and powers to see. Let me use this illustration. There is a theater that you can't see. And God is sitting saying, just watch and see how my child is going to react to that situation. Please don't embarrass. <laughs> <laughs> Don't embarrass your father. Mungu <laughs> amechocha angels. Amewachocha amesema just watch. Just just watch. Angalia tu wako karibu kushinda hiyo hali. All eyes are on you. Macho yote kwako. And those moments say God, you feel so distant. Na hiyo ndio wakati unasema Mungu unahisi ni kama uko mbali sana. And God is like, no, just watch. What I've put inside that person. Just watch. If they just, if they just start to think about who they have become, then the Holy Ghost have been prompting them through my spirit to just go and speak in tongues. Just watch. So initially the thing seemed like it was going to overwhelm the person. When they went into their closet, they began, even when they began, they didn't feel like it. I'm a new creature, I'm a new creature. But they say, anyway, let me just stay here. After two hours, hey, I'm a, I'm a new creature. I'm a new, ah, lebaha. I'm bigger than this thing. I'm bigger, ah. After a while, the person starts laughing. 
And God taps the angel and says, I told you. I, I know. I, I, I told you. I told you. Hey. That's my boy. Oh, that's my girl. Please don't be this person. When such a thing happens, first thing, God, if you don't do anything about it, I'm no longer serving you. You have begun with threats. <laughs> From threats, it has become heavy accusations. Not just accusations. <laughs> heavy. <laughs> Which kind of God deals with his children like this? <laughs> Apostle David, is our teacher in Uganda used to say, God will just say, no, that one has spiritual da, diapers. <laughs> But for real, you'll be tested. And that's good news. Because you must overcome. Yeah. No matter how severe the test, what's inside you is greater. Even in tears, I'm a new creature. I'm a new... It's okay. You cry your identity. Cry in your identity. Shout it. Cry. That is the walk we have. And Paul says, we are like those who are despised in this world. He was saying, Paul ministers, all manner of things. And people sometimes ask the question, this is serving God. How come? Eh, eh. It's like when I got born again, all issues started. Yes, what were you expecting? <laughs> you are standing in opposition to a different kingdom. But God knows you must overcome. Lakini Mungu anajua lazima utashinda. Stand firm. Simama imara. In who he says you are. Katika jinsi anavyosema wewe uko. I can tell you not even death. Naweza kuambia si hata mauti. Not even death. Sio hata mauti. Has the power to overcome who you've become in Christ Jesus. Kuna nguvu ya kushinda jinsi ambavyo umefanyika katika Kristo Yesu. Even in the worst of moments, you can find joy. Even in the worst of moments. I don't typically share this, but when we lost our daughter with my wife, the day they announced wakati and gave us the news mtoto siku, pamoja na bibi yake wakati walipotangaza with all the emotions that were running in me pamoja na hisia zote ambazo zilikuwa zinakimbia katika kichwa I remember but I have been telling people all you need nilikumbuka <laughs> nimekuwa nikiambia watu ile unahitaji tu neno I should also be able to what Kama to take it. Watu wengine, lazima pia mimi I told Angie, just lie on the bed, it's okay. We are going to believe for resurrection. If the child is yeah. resurrected or not, we'll see what to do. But give me time. I need like two hours. And I started. My mind was on Jesus is the reason, Lord. Jesus is the reason. Emotions were many. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I said, Jesus is the reason, Lord. Le, 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 tanks, tanks, tanks. One hour, one hour, 30 minutes. Peace flooded my soul. I started to laugh. And I knew whether the child comes back or not. I'm good. So what I'm saying works. I've only shared that with you. I don't share that. Yeah. Yes. Mm. And you know what shocked me? I had some friends also. I hope they are watching. They also mm. lost their child at six months. I know also mm. Peter Charlo is here. He's gone through the same thing as well. We had some friends in Busia. Kulikuwa na marafiki pale Busia. And when we went to the funeral, I have it on video here. They decided we are going to launch a praise session here. If I show you the video, you'll ask, were they in a crusade or where had they gone? People started, their mother started dancing. Hey, I said, this is how it is. I'm not saying your test will be a loss of a loved one. I'm just saying you'll be tested. 
and you must overcome. Na lazima ushinde. It is a must. Ni lazima ushinde. God will bring people like Pastor Dorothy who will hold your hand. Mungu ataleta watu kama mchungaji Dorothy ambao atakushikilia mkono. But mm. okay, oh, siku hizo umeingia kwa kiboko. Ongeze <laughs> machozi. Amesema siku hizi pia natambea na nyaunyo. <laughs> kiboko pia kiko huko. Mm. You can't falter. Hawezi kuzimia. Mm-mm. Let me tell you what's in you can't be I know what I'm saying. It is just if you ninajua. give it room. Ninasema ukiipatia nafasi. Yeah, with all the feelings you say but God Pamoja said I'm born of zote. him. Unakumbuka Holy God, let me yield unapone. myself to you. Wacha it will amaze you. Itakushangaza. It will amaze you. Itakushangaza. The fruit of the spirit are not feelings they are spiritual virtues spiritual realities Tunda la kiroho sio hisia ni That's why no matter how you feel you can override Dio kwa maana hata kama una hisia You can override the negative emotions you can override the negative thoughts Unaweza shinda ile mawazo mabaya For some of us the test is mental depression Wengine wetu ile jaribio tuko nalo ni kufinyiliwa kimawazo Actually yesterday where we were There is a man of God who Jana mahali tulikuwa kati ya watumishi wa Mungu. I'll not mention the name. Kulikuwa na mtumishi wa Mungu. He was speaking to us in the privacy of us as ministers. Alikuwa anatuongelesha kama watumishi. He has accomplished great things. Ametenda mambo makuu. With all that he got such a burnout and such a depression that lasted for three years. Na katika hiyo hali aliingia katika kusukumwa kufinyiliwa kimawazo. And basically he summarized it this way he said. Na alimalizia kwa kusema hivi. How he got healed he started to rediscover intimacy with God. Jinsi alivyopokea uponyaji alianza kutambua tena kukua na ushirika wa karibu na Mungu. Then the virtues of joy and peace started to flow. Kisha furaha na kububujikwa na amani ikaanza kutirika. Your test will be different. Jaribio lako But it's going to be targeted at your identity. But litakuwa limelenga kama So that out of your mouth you can say I am not really. Hey, am I really born again? Shetani atakuwa anajaribu kutafuta useme who you are in Christ. And then it means at least we have neutral, maybe for a season but at least we've neutralized this one. Na adui anajua kwamba labda inaweza kuwa kwa muda lakini huyu tumepoesha. Stand your ground. Simama katika nafasi yako. Paul said in famines, in distresses, in Paulo persecutions. Katika nja, katika those guys were katika beaten mateso, but they would still get up and tell kupikwa. people if any man be in Christ. Walikuwa bado wanasimama na wanasema mtu yeyote akiwa katika Kristo. The people who've gone before us died and bled for this same message. Watu walio tutangulia katika imani walimwaga damu na wakafa kwa ajili ya hii ujumbe. So they expect more from us. Kwa hivyo wanatutarajia sisi. Same Holy Tinuki. Ghost we have. Roho yule yule tuko yeah. naye. Yeah. Mm. Mm. We are spiritual people. Sisi ni watu wa kiroho. Born of the spirit. Tumezaliwa na roho. We are to live life from the inside out. Inatupasa kuishi maisha kutoka ndani ikielekea nje. Let me say this. Wacha niseme hivi. If you draw from your spirit man ukijifunza kuchota kutoka kwa mtu wako ndani experience wholeness utahisi ukamilifu pastor g said nothing missing nothing lacking mchungaji glory alisema hakuna kitu kitakuwa kimekosekana wala kuvunjika wholeness in your mind ukamilifu katika mawazo yako you be more productive utakuwa kuzalisha zaidi wholeness in your emotions ukamilifu katika hisia zako because they are subjecting themselves to the spiritual realities of joy and kwa sababu peace. zinajisalimisha chini ya uhakika wa hali za roho you must overcome lazima ushinde you must ni lazima you must ni lazima you must lazima the more fire comes the more refined you become jinsi mateso ama moto unaendelea kuongezeka ndio vile unaendelea kuwa bora zaidi the men's are not so many now amina zimedidimia lakini ndio ukweli no you must lazima you must lazima lazima i have a word for it nowadays turbulence turbulence is good inaitwa kutikisika lazima muhimu mm. 
muhimu sana. God designed your structure to withstand. Mungu alikujenga katika hali ambapo utadhibiti kitu Even when the thing is shaking and you feel we are going to re- today. <laughs> Hata ikitikisika uhisi kwamba leo utaenda. Is no 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 you if you are born of God kama umezaliwa na Mungu put something on the inside of you that is his nature. Alieka kitu ndani mwako kwamba mwako ambapo, ambapo ni hali yake lazima yeah. utadhibiti. You can withstand. Utadhibiti. One last hey how have I ended up here one last thing. Ni jambo la mwisho. You know when Jesus told his disciples go to the other side. Wakati Yesu aliambia wanafunzi wake katika bahari enende. And they got in the midst of a storm. Lengine, na People were rowing. Mawimbi. And uh, this guy which kind of leader is what will go na shanga huyu ni kiongozi ya gani Biblia inasema that he stood from a mountain watching them ya kwamba alikuwa amesimama kwenye mlima na watazama yani he was seeing them rowing and he did, initially naona, didn't do anything na kuna kitu alikuwa anafanya naona tu akingangana i know for some of us you could be in a season where it feels like that's exactly what jesus is doing wengine wetu tuko katika hali unahisi hivyo ndio vile yesu anafanya na wewe the storms are like this and you're trying to look and say where is this guy where is this guy mawimbi inakupepeta lakini unashangaa huyu jamaa kwa but from where he was he was just watching them lakini mahali alikuwa alikuwa na watazama tu only to come and walk on the very thing na anakuja kitembea juu ile kitu inawatishia maisha that administered such fear to their hearts ambayo ilikuwa imewahudumia hofu nyingi and even to invite one of them na hata akakaribisha mmoja wao to experience his reality kuweza kushuhudia uhakika wa hali yake eh by the holy ghost let me say to you you must <laughs> as we rise up on our feet you must overcome It is a must. What is in you can withstand the turbulence. You must. You must. Kora mashika sata baye. You must. You must overcome. Lazima. You must demonstrate his victory. Lazima udhibitishe ushindi wake. You must proclaim to the world that whatsoever and demonstrate to the world whatsoever is born of God. Lazima uonyeshe ulimwengu ya kwamba chochote ambacho kinazaliwa na Mungu overcome. Hakiwezi kushindwa. Have you ever seen a human being running away from an ant? Umeiona binadamu anakimbia mdudu mdogo? The day you'll wake up to who you are you realize that the devil is not even your biggest problem. Wakati utaamka na utambue wewe ni nani utagundua kwamba shetani hata shida yako. You'll discover it was your own ignorance. Utatambua kwamba ni kutojua kwako wewe. Please don't stone me for coming strong. Tafadhali msinipige maoni kwa bila ukweli. When you really really discover who you are as a new creature. Wakati unatambua kwa hakika wewe ni nani kama kiumbe kipya that you are a product of resurrection ya kwamba ulitokana na kufufuka ama it will dawn on you my goodness itaku utatambua kwamba even the enemy hey. that i thought was the biggest obstacle turns out is not ule adui nilidhania ndio shida kubwa kumba si hata shida i must overcome lazima nishinde i want us to lift up our voice even as i pray Now, if you're here and you've not received yako. Jesus, kama uko hapa na haujaokoka tafadhali. I'd like you to say this prayer with me. Ningependa useme hili ombi na mimi. It's not really the prayer that saves, it is that you have believed in Jesus Christ. Sio ombi linaokoa ni wewe kumwamini Kristo. I'm just helping you to give expression to what you've believed. Na But if I've been sharing and in your heart ukiri. you felt convicted, kama wakati nilikuwa naongea ulihisi kushawishika ndani ya moyo wako. As we bow our heads, wakati tunainamisha vichwa vyetu. I want you to say this. Nataka useme hivi. Jesus, Yesu, I believe, naamini. You were sent from God, ulitumwa kutoka kwa Mungu for my salvation. Not only that my sins may be forgiven, sio tu ya kwamba dhambi zangu zisamehewe, but that I bali pia kwamba mimi may be born of the most high god niweze kuzaliwa na Mungu aliye mkuu through your resurrection kupitia ufufuo wako i am also resurrected mimi pia nimefufuliwa for i believe in my heart maana nimeamini katika moyo wangu that god really did raise you from the dead ya kwamba Mungu kwa hakika alikufufua kutoka kwa wafu because i believe in my heart kwa sababu naamini katika moyo wangu that god raised you from the dead Mungu alikufufua kutoka kwa wafu i also believe 
pia ninaamini that i am raised up together with your son mimi nami nimefufuliwa pamoja nawe i pass from death to life ninavuka kutoka kwa mauti na ingia kwa uzima therefore i am born of you this day kwa hivyo leo hii nimeokoka na kuzaliwa and your spirit abides in me forevermore na roho wako anakanda ni yangu milele help me nisaidie to know who i am kujua mimi ni nani and what has happened to me this day na kile ambacho kimefanyika ndani mwangu leo Now for the rest of us kwa ajili ya wengine wetu I typically would call an altar call but I felt to do it that way today. Kwa kawaida ningeita wakuja hapa mbele lakini leo nilihisi nifanye hivyo. For if you made that decision kama umefanya huo uamuzi Mama Eve is here eh dada yetu Mama Nairobi representative kama mwakilishi wa hapa Nairobi find time and tell her pata nafasi umweleze. When you made that prayer I prayed along with you wakati umefanya hilo ombi nimeomba pamoja nawe so that we can uh, help with your spiritual growth kwa sababu ili kwamba tuweze kukusaidia kukua kiroho for the rest of us kwa wengine wote who are born again ambao tayari tumekwisha kuzaliwa mara ya pili i really want to pray for niombe kwa ajili ya ufunuo particularly revelation of who we've become haswa sana ufunuo we, kuweza kujitambua so tunafanyika na kwa hivyo nataka tuinue mikono yetu and we are going to ask the spirit of god together actually na tutamuuliza roho mtakatifu kwa pamoja to, to grant us revelation atupatie ufunuo to grant us revelation atupe ufunuo now i sense ninahisi a stirring uchochezi wa roho a stirring kuchochewa na roho both of spiritual virtues kwa mambo ambayo inatokana na roho such mwenyewe such as joy and peace furaha na amani for many of us here kwa ajili ya wengi wetu hapa but i also sense a stirring lakini pia ninahisi uchochezi ama of, kuchochewa of of dynamis or you could call it like power wa, or nguvu, resurrection power nguvu za ufufuo wa kristo so i want us first to ask for revelation kwa hivyo nataka kwanza tumuulize Mungu atupe ufunuo hiyo ni muhimu zaidi ya yote In your own words just say Holy Spirit really in your own words tell him help me to understand who I've become. Katika maneno yako mwenyewe mwambie kusaidie kufahamu umefanyika nani katika Kristo. Lift up your voice to him. Inua sauti yako kwake. Cuz that is his desire by the way. Hilo ndilo tamanio lake. And in, in that same prayer I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to direct us to places where we can be taught who we are in Christ really na katika hilo ombi tutamuuliza pia roho wa Mungu atuelekeze mahali tutasaidika kukua kiroho spirit of god rakisasha give to us revelation kitala baba roho wa Mungu tupe ufunuo father baba through your spirit kupitia roho wako really give us understanding kweli tupatie ufahamu give us understanding tupe ufahamu so that we are not overtaken by our feelings ili kwamba tusilemewe na hisia zetu or by the opinions of those who are not born again ama na mawazo ya wale ambao hawajaokoka or even by our marital situations ama hata na hali zetu kindoa or even by our financial situations ama hata hali zetu kifedha help us tusaidie sisi to be a st- Established kuweza kuimarika in who you've made us to be ndani ya vile umetufanya kukua let us be so grounded wacha tuweze kukita mizizi let us be so rooted wacha tukite mizizi kabisa in our identity in christ katika kitambulisho chetu ndani ya kristo This is your desire God. Hili ndilo tamanio lako e Mungu. Grant to us insight. Tuwezeshe kupokea kufahamu. Give us a listening ear. Tupatie masikio yanayokusikiza. That responds only to truth. Inayoitikia kweli pekee. Hora mashika sata ba Yesu. Shakati la kira la kipopiko. Raba kasata ba Yesu. Mosu sa kipopiko la kile bebe. Zosho kuto. Okay, there is something else that's coming more about Shika Sata by Kuna pia kinakuja. Rado sakatala mandis. Something else that's coming. Kuna kitu kingine pia. Shiko raba kasata by Trust me the way you've asked the Holy Spirit like that he has heard. 
Amini wakati ambapo unamuuliza roho wa Mungu kwa mekusikia. And I believe from today na naamini kuanzia leo whether through your personal study hata kama itakuwa wewe mwenyewe ukisoma maandiko. Let me tell you for some of us kwa wengi na wetu you'll be listening to your pastor and say eh hey, now I understand him. Utakuwa unamsikiza mchungaji wako na sema eh hey, sasa so, now, now I get it. Now I get it. Sasa ninaelewa. Ora mashika sata ba yes. There is an overflow of revelatory knowledge. Kuna kuongezeka kwa ufunuo. An overflow of wisdom. Kuongezeka kwa hekima. For the Lord gives wisdom. Manake Mungu anapeana hekima. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Na kutoka kwa kinywa chake kuna faida kubwa sana ba ye. Eh, hey, aba hasa ta ba ye. Ah, I'm hearing some things. And you shall delight in the truth. Na utajifurahisha katika ukweli. You shall take pleasure in the truth. Utafurahia kweli. Yeah, I'm seeing you in your Bible study and you'll be like, "Wow, this is so wonderful." God, you're opening my eyes. I had never seen this before. Bare bashikara manele basandala bayande. Just as you enjoy prayer, jinsi tunafurahia maombi you shall enjoy the study of the word of god pia utafurahia kusoma neno la mungu ora masika sata la mandis this is not for professors or bible scholars yes you to kwa wasomi pekee revelation is for all of the children of god ufunuo ni kwa ajili ya watoto wote wa mungu there shall be an understanding given to you utakuwa na ufahamu umepewa ora masika sata la mandi baka sata ba ye mara bakasia kasata ba yesu and one hour will become two hours na lisali moja itafanyika mbili and two hours will become three hours na saa mawili yatafanyika matatu and you say my goodness the sun is going down na utasema haya and i am still here on john 316 na bado ninasoma yohana 3 the more i stay here the more things are coming to me na zidi kukaa hapa ndio lazima mara bakasata not a trickle of revelation but a fountain of revelation ufunuo chemicheni kwa wiki overflow of revelation tiririko mkuu wa ufunuo kura mashika satas oh i'm hearing this god i thank you nasikia mungu nakushukuru because he has hidden these things from the wise of this world kwa sababu ameficha haya mambo kwa wenye and he has revealed them to us his children amewafunulia sisi watoto wake what are these things god has revealed ni vitu gani Mungu amefunua This is the gospel Heni njili Hey abashaka sata ba yes This is the wisdom of God This message is the wisdom of God You do that your hekima ya Mungu It is the wisdom of God Your hekima ya Mungu Mare bakasata ba yes And the wisdom of God is wiser than men Na hekima ya Mungu inashinda wanadamu Mara bashika tala mandes There is no gospel for the poor or gospel for the rich there is just the gospel of Jesus Christ. There is no gospel for the white or for the black there is just the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is mighty and powerful. Something is being stirred up here. He that is spiritual judges all things. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. We, we are those who are taught of the Holy Ghost. We, we are taught of the Spirit. We, we don't speak with the wisdom of men. But we speak by revelation. We speak as we are taught. And many will say, "Where did you get this wisdom from?" Because you are going to answer questions in the hearts of men. Kwa sababu utajibu maswali katika mioyo ya wanadamu. Oh, Ramasika Talamandes. And there is something happening to the teaching ministry that we all carry. Kitu inafanyika katika is happening to the teaching ministry. Something is happening. Huduma ya kufunza. Some of you have been saying, "Mimi sijui kuongea vizuri." Wengine wamekuwa kusema, "Don't worry." 
gani. This is why the spirit of God is in you. Ndio maana yake roho wa Mungu kwa kwa ni to give you revelation. Atakupea ufunuo. And to give you wisdom. Na kukupea hekima. But when you open your mouth to speak, ya kwamba ukifungua kichwa chako, they will say where did you learn this from? Watauliza ulijifunza haya wapi? You will speak and your words will pierce the hearts of men. Utanena na maneno yako yatachoma mioyo. You will speak and it will be answering questions. Utanena na itakuwa ikijibu the hearts of those who are listening to you. Katika mioyo ya wale watakusikia. Hey, ama hasate. You will speak and you'll be addressing them their spirits. Na utakuwa unawaelekeza kwa roho zao. Areba shika sata ba Yesu. Revelation is glorious. Listen, God's glory is, is in different ways. There is his miracle working.